Hello everyone, so as you may or may not know, and you will know if you follow me on Twitter, which you can do by following the link in the description, I'm a very lucky guy because I recently went to New York City. I've never been to New York City, in fact I've never been to America, and I'm a huge admitted Americaphile. I love American culture, I grew up on American TV, American film, American video games, American literature, American music. American culture fascinates me. Sue me. And there are a lot of cultural differences between Britain and America and London and New York that I'd only ever really experienced remotely through TV or film or talking to people about it. So it was really cool and really fascinating to experience them for myself uh, in person. And I've decided to honour you with my opinions on the subject because I'm just that kind of person. What can I say? I'm generous like that. Small disclaimer before I continue. We only spent a week in New York City and it wasn't even really a full week because we spent a day in Washington DC as well as making a few minor incursions into the surrounding state. So my experience is limited. Some of the things I'm going to talk about might be specific to New York City, whereas other things may apply more generally to America as a whole, and I may not always know which is which. Also, as you've probably identified by now, I am myself British, so it's certainly not going to be objective. This is my subjective opinions on the differences between London and New York, and more generally Britain and America. Alright, first of all, I'd like to talk about the architecture, because I think it's one of the first things you notice when you visit a new place, whether you do it consciously or not. I'm not a native Londoner, and when I first started visiting London regularly and eventually moved here. What struck me about the architecture is how old and ancient and and warm and weathered it is. There's this sense of coziness to London architecture. Well, some of it. Some of it's not so nice, but that's true of pretty much every city on the face of the earth. But the really nice architecture in London has this real sense of, uh, of coziness and, and comfort. I have a sneaking suspicion that this could be an example of my Britishness really skewing my opinion on this because perhaps the comfort and coziness of London could be that I'm visiting the capital city of my own nation and I feel more comfortable in London than in other places. But regardless, comparing that to New York City, oh my god, it, the difference is immense. The scale of the architecture in New York is just mind-blowing. It's so amazingly overwhelming. London has a few skyscrapers but they're nowhere near as big and towering as they are in New York City. The architecture in New York is also boxy done well. It's very angular, it's very art deco. The scale of it is just overwhelming and beautiful and while I was walking through New York I genuinely started to feel quite jealous that we don't have that in London or really anywhere else in the United Kingdom. It's just the sheer scale in New York that gets me. It's really incredible and yeah it made me kind of jealous. Let's move on to the subway systems. The London Underground versus the New York City subway. I have a lot to say about this. I'm very opinionated about it. From the get-go the New York City subway has several large substantial advantages to it. The carriages are usually much bigger. They are air conditioned. It is 24 hours and it is substantially cheaper than the London Underground. If someone said to me based on those attributes that they preferred the New York City subway to the London Underground, I completely understand that and respect it. I accept that there are going to be people who feel that way. But for me there are also some really big downsides to the subway. Number one, it is dirty. It's just there's no other way to say it. It's just really dirty. You go down into the subway and it's just dark and grotty. The walls are dirty. The floor is dirty. There's puddles. It doesn't look well maintained. It doesn't look well presented. There's really no other way to say it. It doesn't look nice. In the carriages, in my personal opinion, the interior design isn't great. It's all right, but you look around and there's like fake wood paneling in places. And the seats are hard plastic, which are not as uncomfortable as the hard plastic seats on the Paris Metro, but they're still hard plastic. The carriages themselves are just like big steel caravans all attached to each other going down a track. While I was reading about them, I saw someone say they preferred the look of uh, subway trains to those of the underground trains by saying that the subway trains are art deco which I thought was a bit of a stretch. If it is Art Deco, it's not great Art Deco. It's just big steel carriages. Also, when we visited New York, it was summertime. And in some places, when you go down onto the platforms, it is so hot. It's just boiling, boiling hot. Hotter than anywhere on the London Underground I've ever experienced. On a platform, in a carriage. The carriages on the London Underground are not air conditioned and I've never felt it get anywhere near as hot as it did on occasion when using the subway. It's so dark and dirty and boiling hot it just feels really oppressive and the air is so thick and muggy. It's like you're having to breathe soup. I feel like I'm kind of being harsh on the subway here, but um, I'm gonna keep going. The signage on the subway is also really lacking. The London Underground has huge signs everywhere telling you where you need to go very clearly. 
Not so on the subway. Compare all this to the London Underground. Yes, the carriages are smaller. Yes, it's more expensive. Yes, it's not air conditioned. But the barriers are better. The Oyster card is better compared to the Metro card, which is like some flimsy paper card with a magnetic strip on it that doesn't always work every time. It's cleaner. It's nicer. It's more well maintained. The trains come more regularly. There are cushioned seats, which I'm a huge defender of. A lot of people say that the hard plastic seats are more sanitary, whereas the cushioned seats are just filled with germs. Now that may be true, but those who say that are the same people who will quite happily spend all day sliding grease and grime around on their phones and holding them up to their ears and their mouths. If you're gonna be a germaphobe, be consistent about it. If you own and operate a phone that you don't sanitize like every three hours, you don't get to complain about the cushioned seats on the London Underground that you sit on through your clothes. In summation, I kind of feel like it's just a matter of you get what you paid for. With the London Underground, yeah, it's more expensive, but you kind of feel like you're paying for better service. It's way more intuitive. It's easier to use. It's better maintained. Pretty much everything about it is a more streamlined experience. Make it 24 hours and it's golden. Okay, toilets. I feel like this applies more to America in general because it seemed to be everywhere we went in America. Admittedly a relatively small area, but I didn't experience a single deviation from this trend, which was that the actual toilets in America seemed to be better than those in Britain. In Britain, the flush is kind of like splash, splash. Oh, there's still some stuff in there. Well, you're just gonna have to wait 15 minutes. I've got things to do. In America, it's like flush <laughs> and everything's gone. The actual toilet seems to be better in America. However, again, there is a big downside. Before I went to America, I'd heard about the uh, gaps that you find in the cubicles in public toilets. So I wasn't surprised when I saw them, but they are still kind of shocking. Literally gaps that big in between the door and the rest of the cubicle when you're trying to take a shit. It's not just big enough so that someone could look in if they specifically tried to peek in the crack. People can walk past the cubicle and just see you through the crack, just full on taking a dump. There is no reason for that to be the case. Sort it out, America. Good grief. Security. Security in America is interesting. Now, I don't want to be mean. I realize that America takes its security very seriously. I understand that. I get it. You do you, America. But it was, for me, as a non-American, kind of surprising. Airport-style security to visit the Smithsonian Museum in DC. Airport-style security to visit the Washington Visitor Center in DC. Two rounds of airport-style security to go into the Statue of Liberty. One before you get on the ferry to Liberty Island and one before you enter the pedestal. Two rounds of airport-style security just to visit the Statue of Liberty. Again, I get it, America. You love your security, you like it hardcore. It just seemed to me personally, in my subjective opinion, just a tad much. Okay, let's do a quick fire round of things I noticed about America. You really do like your flags. I always thought growing up, you know, every country does that. Moving around Britain, you do occasionally see the odd British flag. Everybody does that. No, America takes it way more seriously. American flags everywhere. While I was on a coach traveling just through the inside edge of New Jersey, we were traveling through this one area that was just basically shops and stores and restaurants. And I would say two out of three of them all had a personal flagpole with an American flag. There was a McDonald's there that had the biggest American flag I have ever seen standing outside. For a McDonald's. Gotta love America. Moving on, London is more fashionable. I'm just gonna say it. I feel like even in summertime, where we do get the occasional day in London where it is really, really hot, people still put in a little bit more effort to just kind of, to look nice. In America, it's just like, fuck it. T-shirt, tank top, shorts, Crocs. I don't know, there's no real nice way to say it. I just feel like, feel like we, we just kind of put in a bit more effort. Also, New York City smells. It just smells in places. You walk through a certain area and you're just like, ugh. There, yeah, that's, uh, that's not good. Street food availability. Way better in New York. There are hot dog stands everywhere. And they don't just sell hot dogs. They sell kebabs. They sell burgers. They sell knishes. I had my first knish. Never had a knish before. They're okay. It's just way better. It's just way superior. One thing I found weird was all the advertisements for like, therapy. I saw one billboard that just had a, a, an image of a smiling gentleman on it and it just said, Goodbye depression, hello therapy. Just a bit weird. In a way it's good, you really should be, you know, destigmatizing therapy and the treatment of mental health, but it just felt a little, I don't know, tactless? Also the toilet paper is better in Britain. I don't know why, but pretty much everywhere we went, all the toilet paper, even in our hotel room, was really flimsy and thin. Not great. Okay, last thing, and this is a big pro in favor of New York City. New York City really is a 24 hour city. London is not. I saw an advertisement on the tube recently that referred to London as the city that never sleeps. And I almost tore it down. A lot of places in London close at 11 p.m. Just as things are getting good. Not the case in New York City. I saw on menus saying we serve food until 3 a.m. Amazing. You don't get that in London. Can London please be a 24 hour city? Can we dispense with these horrific curfews? All right, I think I'm done. I think that's it. Hopefully I haven't offended anyone. If I have, suck it up.